Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Borean International with me, Keith Johnston. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, issued Edict 14 of 2018, appointing two new directors in the Ministry of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning. Raria Khalifa Ahmed Al Mane was appointed as Director of Urban Development Directorate and Hussein Jawad Aleth as Director at Flora Resources Directorate. The Minister of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning is to implement this edict starting from its date of issuance and to be published in the official gazette. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, sent a cable of congratulations to the President and members of the basketball team of Manama Sports Club on the occasion of winning the Khalifa bin Salman Basketball Championship. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister praised the spirit of sportsmanship of the Manama team and its advanced levels throughout the tournament until it deserved to win the first place. His Royal Highness asserted his support to the efforts exerted by the Chairman of the Bahrain Basketball Federation, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa, in the development of the game. His Royal Highness also said that upon his directives, the rewards of the winners were doubled this year in support of the fine efforts to promote this popular game. His Royal Highness meanwhile expressed pride in the remarkable level of organisation of the tournament under the supervision of His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa. This, His Royal Highness said, increases confidence in youth capabilities and enhances the opportunities to host regional and international basketball events that reflect the state of the Kingdom of Bahrain and its pioneering role in this aspect. His Royal Highness wished all the best of luck in serving the Kingdom and its people. The Duke of York, His Royal Highness Prince Andrew, arrived in the Kingdom today to attend the launching of Pitch at Palace programme, Bahrain's edition. The programme will be held today under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the Duke of York, His Royal Highness Prince Andrew, in partnership with Tamkeen. During his visit to the Kingdom, the Duke of York will attend a number of events and host meetings under the framework of the outstanding relations between the two friendly countries and their continuous joint cooperation in all the different fields. Upon arrival, the Duke of York was received by His Majesty the King's personal representative, President of the Supreme Council for the Environment, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamid Al Khalifa, Maharat Governor, Mr Salman bin Isa bin Hindi, and the UK Ambassador to Bahrain, Mr Simon Martin, in addition to a number of senior officials. The personal representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council of Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirmed that hosting the first Arab sports conference in the Kingdom under the title The Role of Sports in Achieving the Goals of Sustainable Development, organised by the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs in cooperation with the United Nations Office in Bahrain and the International Council for Health, Physical Education, Recreation and Sport, reflects the Kingdom's efforts in employing sports to benefit society and spread awareness on the role of sports in supporting the goals of the United Nations in achieving development in all fields. He added that the conference is part of Bahrain's efforts in achieving the goals of sustainable development for all through sports. He also stated that sports develop individuals, societies and countries and it's a force that helps surmount the obstacles that create a gap between the sexes. It also promotes the existence of peace. Sheikh Nasser expressed faith in achieving the goals of the conference and will host a number of experts and hold a number of sessions on the importance of sports. He also praised the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs for organising the event and for the successful organisation of previous conferences in the Kingdom. The representative of His, His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and Chairman of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirmed that the Bahrain International Futsal Challenge for 24 consecutive hours is in line with the vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to attract the youth and gather them under one roof, noting that the Kingdom's winning a Guinness World Record is a result of the support of His Majesty the King to Bahrain Sports. He stated that setting a new world record in the championship and the kingdom's entering the Guinness World Record affirms the remarkable status of the kingdom in sports and the role of the Bahraini youth in the success of all sporting events and activities. He added that such initiatives increase Bahraini sports achievements and provide a motivation to exert more efforts and achieve the visions of His Majesty the King, 
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He hailed the efforts of the First Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Athletics Association, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and his attendance of the inaugurating and concluding ceremonies of the championship. He stated that the event's success affirms Bahrain's position on the world map. Governor of the Southern Province, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, laid the foundation stone for the construction of the Zalik Cemetery Hall. Present were the Chairman of Alkaf and Gardaimants Council, Sheikh Rashid Al Hajri, Director General of Southern Government Police, Brigadier Hamad Al Mari, and a number of Zalik citizens. In a statement on the occasion, Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa said that this charity project is part of a package of initiatives, development projects and services adopted by the Southern Province with the blessing of His Royal Highness Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa. He stressed that the development project is part of humanitarian and charitable projects being adopted in accordance with a comprehensive development plan to develop services and facilities in the Southern region to meet the needs and aspirations of the citizens. His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa toured Azalik village to find the most important living and service requirements in the region, where he met with a number of citizens. He said that the great interest of the Southern Government is in achieving all that is in line with the citizens in Zalik and other areas of the Southern Government. The Chairman of the Sunni Endowments Council expressed thanks to His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa for laying the foundation stone in the hall. The citizens of Zalik praised the inspection visit by the Governor of the, the, governor of the Southern Province. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, deputised Bahrain Basketball Association, the BBA Chairman, Sheikh Issa bin Ali Al Khalifa, to attend the concluding ceremony of the second edition of the Khalifa bin Salman Basketball Cup. Sheikh Issa bin Ali hailed the patronisation of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister of the Cup, affirming the pride and appreciation of all Bahraini basketball players of His Royal Highness's honouring. He added that His Royal Highness's patronisation is a source of pride for the Bahraini basketball team. He also expressed thanks and appreciation to the Prime Minister for deputising him to attend the final match and honour the winning team, gold medal winners and second place silver medal winners.
The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed bin Ibrahim Al Mula, delivered a speech in the 27th Arab Parliamentary Union Conference held at the Union's headquarters in the Egyptian capital, Cairo. Al Mula affirmed that the Kingdom, under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, has laid the foundation for the freedom, democracy, and respect of human rights. He recalled the establishment of the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence which reflects the Kingdom's vision to promote the concepts and values of peaceful coexistence between people and nations. During the conference, which reviews the current Arab situation, Amullah discussed terrorism, Iranian interventions, media incitement, non-objectivity and the lack of some human rights organisations' credibility. He asserted that Iranian interventions in the affairs of the region's countries and its blatant support and funding of terrorism has led to many terrorist crimes. He noted that the terrorist acts that took place in the Kingdom since the beginning of 2011 have led to the martyrdom of 22 security officers and the injury of 3,437 police officers. Al Mullah called for intensifying parliamentary efforts for the benefit of future generations and to reflect the aspirations of the Arab people. The Minister of Information Affairs, who is the Chairman Board of the Trustees of Bahrain Institute for Political Development, Ali bin Mohammed al Ramehi, congratulated Al Balad newspaper for winning the Arab Journalism Award in the category of Investigative Journalism, which is part of the awards of the 17th Arab Media Forum held in Dubai and honoured by the Vice President and Prime Minister of the UAE and ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. The minister noted that Abdullah's newspaper win highlights the role of Bahraini journalism and its history as well as its role as an essential partner in community awareness and promoting intellectual, cultural and civilization creativity and supporting the sustainable development march. He congratulated the writer and journalist Said Ali al mufafte and the president of the Bahraini Journalists Association, Abdullah chief editor Munis al murdi for motivating free press. Arumahi affirmed the Ministry's support of young Bahraini competencies in the media and journalism field and enabled them to perform their national duties professionally and objectively, which contributes to the promotion of Bahrain in various regional and international events during the prosperous era of him, His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa. The Bahrain Defence Force, the BDF Combat Group, continues its participation in the joint military drill, Gulf Shield 1, with brotherly and friendly countries. The importance of the joint drill lies in increasing combat efficiency and operational and tactical capabilities through the exchange of expertise and civil skills between the participating forces in all the combat operations fields, as well as raising combat preparedness to confront various threats in the battlefields. The BDF combat group participating in the drill affirmed its competency and readiness in civil drills which are considered a main goal in building and forming armies and guaranteed method to test the abilities of armed forces. Over 100,000 people have touched down in Bahrain ahead of tomorrow's Grand Prix where the lights will be shining bright as the 5th 2018 Formula One Gulf Air Grand Prix night race gears up for the biggest sporting and entertainment event of the year. More in this report with Mohammed Yosef. All eyes will once again be on the home of motorsport in the Middle East as it hosts the 2018 Formula One World Championship and the BIC has stepped up its preparations across its 5.412 kilometer Grand Prix track which will be hosting all the action from April 6th to the 8th. Well, um, we, have, uh, we have a lot of uh, light poles and light fixtures. We've got about uh, 495 light poles and about over 4,900 light fixtures. So we ensure that all of those are working. We ensure that they are aimed properly. We ensure that uh, the electrical current uh, is uh, steady to those. We run on generators, backed up by generators and backed up by the grid. So we uh, try to make sure that uh, there is no single point of failure. We ensure that everything should run smooth and we are prepared for any uh, emergency or any problems. Bahrain being a night race is something that uh, makes us stand out. Uh, there's a few full night races uh, uh, on the calendar, Bahrain being uh, one of them. Uh, the night race for us uh, first uh, makes it uh, logical for the uh, audience in Europe, uh, the timing, the difference in timing. It also uh, facilitates uh, our visitors from our neighbors uh, from Saudi Arabia to come down and see the race. Uh, it's wonderful weather, it's, it's better as far as the heat is concerned 
concerned. It's better for people that work to finish their work and come and attend the race. So it makes a lot of economic sense. It may, it's practical. It's, it makes sense for us to have a night race. We are the newest night race. We're equipped for HD filming. You know, our, our lights literally turn uh, night into day. Um, the runoff areas look beautiful under the under the lights. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it just makes the circuit stand out and it brings out the beauty in the circuit. All sorts of upgrades, maintenance, and setup work are being done all across the Sakhir facility, covering every other corner of the BIC as it is being prepped up to welcome fans for the highly anticipated Bahrain Grand Prix. So this is our fifth year for the night race. So uh, yes, the night race has been very positively impacting in, uh, in our ticket sales and the experience of everyone. All the drivers are very happy. All the fans are very happy with the night race. Preparation for the night race is not much different from the uh, day race. But uh, of course for the filming and for the setup on the service road with the marshals, with everyone, there is extra preparation of light, logistics and everything. So definitely it requires a little bit more preparation, but the uh, impact of it and the benefits of it is much, much more than any effort we are doing on that. This is the fifth successive year for the Bahrain Grand Prix under BIC's state-of-the-art flood lighting system where the world's fastest single-seaters will be shining in the Sakhir Desert. The night race is now a major fixture at BIC, expanding the season and allowing the circuit to offer new opportunities to motorsport enthusiasts and continues to be a statement of intent for the future of motorsport in the Gulf Kingdom. Industry, Commerce and Tourism Minister Zaid bin Rashid Al Ziani launched the third edition of the Hurafina Handicrafts Festival, organised by Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority last night. More in this report with Hiba Abdul Ghaffar. The third edition of Herafna Handicrafts Festival starts in cooperation with Egypt, showcasing unique talents, amazing traditional products, and a great collaboration between the two friendly countries. Uh, we have chosen this historic location because of its value uh, to the tradition of trading and manufacturing in Bahrain. Uh, this year we have a host country for the first time, the Republic of Egypt. Uh, we have 11 handicrafts uh, represented from Egypt. Some have similar handicrafts in Bahrain, some are complementary. The aim is really to learn from their experiences, from their uh, marketing skills. Uh, and to see how we can best merge our handicrafts together for better productivity, efficiency and market exposure. Uh, it's been a great success. We aim always to do this event during the F1 weekend to give uh, more exposure to our visitors and guests from outside Bahrain to our other side of culture and history and, and traditional products made in Bahrain. The five-day festival comes as part of Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority's strategy to develop the handicraft sector and traditional industries in the kingdom and preserve them for future generations by further developing the local craftsmanship and providing them with a platform to showcase their handmade goods. The Egyptian products are of utmost importance, as well as the Bahrainis. I'm impressed with the workmanship of both Bahrain and Egypt. And I just believe there is a lot of complementary stuff that they would do together. So this is an initiation of a process of bringing together not only our workmanship our, or, or our products, but as well our histories together. High quality traditional products such as hand woven baskets, traditional musical instruments, wooden boxes, pottery, model chips and much more are there for sale. Moreover, craftsmen are displaying the manufacturing of swords and daggers, wool making, jewellery making, embroidery on traditional dresses, knitting and many more, along with a variety of family entertainment activities offered to visitors, including live performances by traditional Bahraini bands. Very proud to joining this festival uh, because I'm selling a Bahraini brand jewellery. Um, continue with the 18 carats and the 21 carats. Everybody wants to come to this exhibition and this is the second year I, I, I enjoy in this uh, exhibition. It's really fine, it's really nice. We're very happy for, uh, because we are here. Uh, our Egyptian product is very, very good and we want everybody 
come to here and uh, take our products. Egyptian uh, style in uh, Pharaonic wood, the sun ships and the uh, Faluka. He making inside all this wood inside this one here. The launch of the festival follows the success of the previous editions and strengthens Bahrain's position as a distinctive family tourism destination that offers unique local goods and attractions. The third edition of Herafna Festival showcases incredible talents and amazing handcrafted products not only from Bahrain but also from Egypt. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdelghafour. Water Bay West, a Hollywood-inspired residences concept developed by Ben Fakir in cooperation with Paramount Residences, is on track for completion in 2019, marking one of the biggest real estate concepts to be introduced in the kingdom. More in this report with Yasmin Ibrahim. Work on Hollywood concept residences is underway as part of a major real estate project in the kingdom. The Water Bay West, a project initiated by Bin Faqih in cooperation with Paramount Residences, is estimated to open in 2019. The California-inspired hotel apartments that are designed to mirror trademark Hollywood glamour was unveiled last night by Bin Faqih chairman Faisal Bin Faqih alongside Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority Chief Executive Sheikh Khalid bin Hamoud Al Khalifa. A great pleasure يعني, to have Paramount in Bahrain. Uh, first of all, you know, as Paramount is as a great company over 100 years old. And we're really proud to announce today that Paramount is in Bahrain. That is going to put us in, in a very a prime location in the world. And especially Paramount, they are, they are connected in all over the, the world. Um, the Paramount relation with them was very smooth. They were very keen for to come to Bahrain. For everything that we have done, everything went to smooth. Well, alhamdulillah, everything just got the way it's supposed to be. We announce and we are very grateful. Also present at the event was American actor, producer and screenwriter Steven Seagal as an ode to the project's deep-rooted American theme, along with the chairman of Paramount Hotels and Resorts. We are so proud to be here tonight and to launch our first project, which is the Paramount Residences by, Bahrain, by Bin Faqih at Bahrain Bay. Uh, actually, we choose uh, Bin Faqih because we have seen that uh, they are a great developer and they have done really uh, very good uh, projects and their products and the quality of finishing and uh, everything what they have done in the past was really uh, remarkable. That's why we choose Ben Fakih and that's why we choose Bahrain as well. We know that Bahrain deserves to have such a brand and paramount very proudly to be in Bahrain and this is will boost the business to Bahrain and uh, the hospitality, hospitality sector adding big value by having paramount within it. My understanding is that Bahrain is very interested in uh, expanding globally and they are also interested in movies and movie making and um, they're interested in bringing here a lot of people who have a very strong international presence and I think those are the things that are very very uh, uh, necessary in order to really change the terrain of this place and uh, they are fast and furiously doing that. I just think that they are talking about a formula that will work by mixing East and West. The partnership with international brand Paramount Residences will be a major contribution to Bahrain's position in both the tourism and real estate sector by fusing Eastern and Western initiatives. The launch was very successful. We are so happy from the attendance. We are so glad from all our clients, visitors, all of them they attend. And they were so happy and impressed from the products. As you know, uh, Paramount is from the movie side and we are merging movies and hotels and residential units. So this merge or mix, it will add good value in terms of uh, the hotel operations in Bahrain. People want to see something different. They want to see the unique products in Bahrain. So we are so happy from the design, we are so happy from our relationship with Paramount and this will be a very good adding value for Bahrain tourism. Bin Faqih continues to make Bahrain proud, creating iconic landmarks across the country and the region. This unique project puts Bahrain on the world map as an economic and touristic destination.
Paramount Residences marks a new standard of luxury in the kingdom. The one-of-a-kind initiative connects the east and the west and is one of the biggest in 2018. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Yasmin Ibrahim. Saudi Arabia's permanent mission to the UN sent a letter to the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres and the President of the Security Council calling for the need for Yemen's Hodida port to be placed under international supervision. They also call for the reprimanding of the Houthi militia of Andoran for violating international laws. They called on the UN to take the necessary measures to implement a Security Council resolutions 2216 and 2231 stressing that the coalition will continue to secure international navigation in Bab al-Mandab and the Red Sea. This comes following a Houthi attack on a Saudi oil tanker in Hodeida on Tuesday. The planned attack was foiled following the intervention of a coalition naval ship. Defence Minister Avigdor Lieberman said that open fire rules for Gaza border, which saw Israeli forces kill 18 Palestinians last week, when a mass protest led to clashes will remain unchanged. Last Friday, a protest by tens of thousands on the Gaza border led to clashes with Israeli forces. In addition to the 18 Palestinians killed on Friday, two other Gazans have been died since then. Israel has faced calls for independent investigation from the European Union and the United Nations Chief, Antonio Guterres, over Friday's violence. Israel has rejected the calls, King, saying the soldiers opened fire when necessary to prevent attacks and attempts to damage defence and infiltrations. The Palestinians say protesters were fired on while posing no threat to soldiers. The health ministry in the Palestinian enclave said the Palestinian was killed by an Israeli airstrike on the Gaza border as tensions increased ahead of the new protests. The health ministry did not identify the man, but said he died in the Shifa hospital in Gaza City after being targeted by an Israeli strike near the border. Separately today, the health ministry announced another man had died of wounds received in last Friday's clashes. The ministry said that Shadi al khabib was shot in the head near the border in southern Gaza and has been in a critical condition since. And before we end the news, here's a reminder of the top stories. Orient Defence Force Combat Group continues the preparation for Gulf Shield 1, aimed at increasing combat efficiency and operational and tactical capabilities. And Israel says that open fire rules for the Gaza border will remain unchanged for the new protest. And that's all from Bahrain International's News Centre. From all the news team and me, Keith Johnston, goodbye.